Good morning. I am Michael Cuyamo, Vice President, Facilities Management. Thank you all for coming today. Welcome, distinguished guests, members of the corporation, facilities and campus planning, Performing Arts Center Design Review Subcommittee, the integrated project team, the Brown community, and our partners from the Rhode Island Building and Construction Trades Council and Building Futures Rhode Island. What an honor to be here today and to be part of the topping off ceremony. The Performing Arts Center building will not only be a one of a kind in higher education, but will also push the boundaries of innovation and performance space across the nation and the globe. With a radical one of a kind approach to spatial and acoustical and technical flexibility, Brown University's Performing Arts Center will inspire innovative art making, enable new forms of artistic co collaboration and serve as a hub for performance at Brown. All successful projects are bound with a vision. All visions are accumulation of multiple goals. Today, the project will achieve a major goal, the topping off, a time-honored building tradition. While all topping off are significant, this one is truly unique. It's unique in the fact that the project team and more specifically, the trade workers have continued to work safely during a global pandemic. Thank you all for your diligence and commitment to each other's health and safety. The continued project success is also a direct result of the integrated project delivery process. To maximize collaboration and support of a building that advances Brown's vision for performing arts, the university is employing the integrated project delivery process. Through this approach, the university, architect, contractors, and subcontractors work together through all phases of the project, resulting in an effective, efficient, and highly collaborative planning, design, and building process. Thank you all for your unwavering dedication and commitment to the successful completion of the project. At this time, I would like to introduce Brown University's 19th president, Christina Paxson. Following President Paxson, we will hear from Michael Sabatoni, president of the Rhode Island Building and Construction Trades Council, Andrew Cortez, Executive Director of Building Futures Rhode Island, Lynn Nottedge, 86, two times Pulitzer Prize winning playwright, and finally, Avery Willis Hoffman, the inaugural Artistic Director of the Brown Arts Initiative. Take it away, President Paxson. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mike. And good afternoon, everybody. I am thrilled to be here to mark this just incredible milestone in the construction of Brown's Performing Arts Center, or the PAC as we call it now. I wanna begin by welcoming all of the students, faculty, staff who've joined us virtually today. By being here, you're showing that you enthusiastically support the arts of Brown and this project in particular, and that makes me very, very happy. I also wanna welcome all of the alumni and friends of Brown who are with us. <clears throat> this project has been an incredible undertaking and none of it would have been possible without your generous support. I look forward to acknowledging and celebrating our donors to this project when the PAC is completed at the appropriate time. But today, we're here to recognize the hard work underway each and every day by the teams of dedicated professionals who support this project. This celebration is about all of you. And while the public health situation has led us to host the celebration virtually, sadly, it in no way detracts from the significance of this milestone. So there are a lot of people to thank, a lot of groups to thank. I wanna thank the members of the University Planning, Facilities Management, and the Brown Arts Initiative. I also wanna recognize Rex, our architectural design team, Shawmut Design and Construction, and especially all of the skilled men and women who are quite literally bringing this remarkable vision to life. I offer special thanks to our, our good friends, uh, Michael Sabatoni and all of the members of the Rhode Island Building and Construction Trades Council, as well as Andrew Cortez from the Building Futures Program. Your partnership enables us to further Brown's mission and also to contribute to growth in the city of Providence. Now, typically at topping off ceremonies, we celebrate how deeply appreciative we are for the work that all of you are doing we talk about the collaborative efforts of the teams and the fact that this work too often goes unnoticed. And all of these things are certainly true of this project. 
But everyone involved in this particular undertaking deserves special recognition. The pandemic has forced us to rethink nearly every aspect of our lives. And it's an incredible testament to the leadership of our state, the leadership of the union and trade organizations, and the dedication of the individual workers on site that we have been able to continue with construction safely and maintain a healthy and safe work site. Doing so has required just incredible collaboration and commitment and innovation, thinking out of the box. That's what the arts are all about too. So on behalf of Brown, I wanna thank you for all that you've done in these truly extraordinary circumstances. Now, as we celebrate this milestone, it also bears recognition that 2020 has been a very difficult time for the arts. That may be an understatement. Many industries across the country have seen financial stress, but the reality of this pandemic has hit particularly hard in the world of arts and the creative economy, which, you know, as we know, it largely relies on gathering people together and shared experience. That's what will happen in this building. We also know that in times of economic distress, the arts can sometimes be seen as expendable, one of the areas that gets cut more than other things. But at Brown, our investment in and support of the arts is as strong as ever. And I hope you can see that commitment in the continuation of this building. In just a bit, you'll hear from Avery Willis Hoffman, our new artistic director, the Brown, director of the Brown Arts Initiative. And she will be helping us expand the depth of our arts programming at Brown and the connection of arts, art making to the academic mission of the university. Our strategic plan building on distinction positions the arts as a truly integral presence throughout the curriculum and the arts are fundamental to fueling innovation and stimulating discovery. And in fact, I would argue even more that it's at times of great uncertainty that we need the arts the most. Uh, art is a vehicle through which we explore modern challenges where we find inspiration where we bring community together and consider together solutions for problems that we're facing. The Performing Arts Center will quite literally make the performing arts a focal point on campus and will aid in that thought and that expression. So to mark this occasion in a special way and begin celebrating that artistic expression, we're thrilled to have Pulitzer Prize winning playwright Lynn Nottage a proud, proud Brown alumna. We're proud of her. I hope she's proud of us. Uh, she's with us today and you'll hear from her later on in the program. I can't wait for the day when we're all gathered together again in person in this uniquely designed space that will enable artistic collaboration and serve as a hub for performance at Brown. So with that, I'll turn it over to Michael Sabatoni, the president of the Rhode Island Building and Construction Trades Council. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for those comments, Madam President. Uh, on behalf of the officers and members of the Rhode Island Building and Construction Trades Council, what an honor and a privilege it is uh, to be here this morning with you uh, on this program to celebrate uh, you know, this very uh, momentous occasion. Now, you heard the, a couple of uh, comments from uh, Michael uh, with regards to the, the history of the, the, the topping off uh, that goes back to the 1700s in the, in the Scandinavian uh, uh, it area and the significance of it today is is a little bit different, but uh, just as much as important as you see the on site view, the live view uh, of a topping off ceremony today is a sense of pride and accomplishment for the tradesmen and women that are accomplishing a, a unique uh, uh, milestone in the construction of a of a building and setting that last beam. And I really appreciate the fact that Brown. Uh, continues to uh, to adhere to history and tradition and continue to celebrate events such as this topping off ceremony. So for that, I commend you, Madam President. And Michael, just as a quick shout out, you know, working with you and all of the staff at Facilities Management with uh, Anthony Casillo, uh, Paul Deedle and Jay Sisson, I mean, working with you guys to say uh, the, the professionalism and how you conduct yourselves on on, on all of the projects that we do across the campus of Brown 
uh, would be an understatement to say on, on the level of detail and professionalism and commitment that you bring not only to Brown and what you're, what you're providing for the, for the students and, and, and for, your, uh, for your campus, but also for the tradesmen and women and the, and the real sense of, of inclusion that you have with the men and women that we represent into your project team. So uh, on behalf of the men and women that are out there working with their hands uh, at the call, uh, I'd like to say thank you uh, for, for bringing us in and making us absolutely feel like part of the team of facilities management. Uh, so for that, we, uh, we thank you. Um, you know, I, I get to do this a lot with brown ribbon cuttings and topping offs. And I like groundbreakings the best because that means we're at the beginning as opposed to the middle of the end. But I do have to say the sense of pride, not only myself as a young man working at Brown in the summers uh, back in my early 20s, uh, but um, just the fact that when we travel around the campus and we see these beautiful structures and the continuing investment that Brown and the alumni and, and the whole uh, investment that you do in the city of Providence and, and, and what you provide uh, as a leader uh, in this state uh, to continue to invest uh, in state-of-the-art facilities such as this Performing Arts Center, which is absolutely going to be the best of the best. Uh, you know, some of the renderings that I've seen and the jurisdictional things that we've been looking at on, on how this building is actually gonna be an interactive build, building for those of you who haven't had the opportunity uh, at some point, once you do get to see it, it is really, really an impressive uh, building and an investment in arts and culture. And just to echo a little bit on what Madam President uh, just mentioned, every great society throughout the history of mankind had one thing in common. Uh, and that one thing in common that they had uh, was uh, a real investment in arts and culture uh, to make those societies great. And the fact that we continue to do that now uh, and continue to invest in the arts and how important it is for us as a society as well, uh, in, in, even in the current stages we find ourselves in with all the issues we've got going on, is a true testament to vision and leadership, not only of Brown, but Madam President Paxton and, uh, and all of the, uh, the faculty there at Brown to invest in something like this that I know for, for decades to come are gonna provide uh, for stimulus and, and all of the good things that come out of art and culture that are so desperately needed for us to have a vibrant society. So for that, we thank you uh, as well. Uh, I'd also like to make a shout out to our construction team up there in Shawmut, uh, design and construction, you know, working with them. It's been difficult working through these pandemics, and but I have to say, uh, at least on a daily basis, <coughs> our continuing conversation back and forth to make sure that we do everything humanly possible to make sure the men and women that we have lacing them up every day uh, out, on the, out on the ground uh, are provided uh, you know, with every single uh, uh, absolute necessity to maintain their safety and distancing and sanitization and all the other things uh, has, has been the reason why we've been able to continue uh, to move along. We've had some difficulties and on a lot of other jobs as well, but I have to say the construction industry as a whole with the commitment of companies such as Shawmut, we've been able to meet these challenges and, and, and continue to keep projects uh, like this uh, on track uh, but do some very difficult circumstances. And again, that's also working with Michael and his team there at facilities management and, and having constant communication back and forth just to make sure that we're doing everything possible to, 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 for the well-being of the men and women that we represent. By the way, and the men and women and, the, and your student body as well. So for that, I, I, I thank you uh, as well. Now, I'm going to give the opportunity now to introduce Andrew. One other thing that I'd like to also mention about Brown has always been its commitment uh, to the workforce and to the city of Providence. And we started the Building Futures program back in 2007. And the two biggest partners that we had when we were trying to get this program off the ground, which was kind of well, I would say was groundbreaking, uh, was we needed partners. And the first two partners to come to the table in a significant way was the city of Providence, but more specifically, Brown University. Brown University uh, understood what we were trying to do, brought on to the program. Uh, and I have to say that you've touched more lives 
through the Building Futures program than any end user of our construction services in the state of Rhode Island. I'd have to say it's in the hundreds of young men and women that have been afforded entry level opportunities through Building Futures into our apprenticeship programs and then into a career in the construction industry. And that would not have happened if it wasn't for Brown University. We would have never gotten off the ground if it wasn't the commitment of, of the university to help us to get this program up and running. And I know Andrew will give you some numbers and they are pretty damn impressive on what we've been able to accomplish for young men and women uh, to come into our industry and work on projects such as the Performing Arts Center and others. And, and it's been in the hundreds. So for that, you should be really proud. I know I am. I couldn't ask for a better partner uh, in Brown in, in continuing to, uh, to, to pursue these uh, endeavors, especially with building futures and, and projects in, the, uh, in and around the city of Providence. As the, goes Brown University, goes the city of Providence. And I'll also say, as goes the city of Providence, goes the state of Rhode Island. So that's how important you are to the building trades. I know that's how important you are to the city. I also know how important you are to the state of Rhode Island, how proud we all are of Rhode Islanders uh, to have Brown University as our, uh, as our uh, signature university here in the, in the capital city. So for that, I want to say thank you. And I would also like now to turn it over to the executive director of Building Futures and Andrew Cortez, who came with me with this idea when I first took over the presidency. And I was like, what, what is this? What are we trying to do here? And to say that we've got you know, someone that gets it, wears it on its, where, where he wears it right on his sleeve every single day. And he has touched hundreds of young men and women and, and given them a career path in the construction industry via apprenticeship. I couldn't be more proud to be uh, associated with him and have worked with him since 2007, getting this program where it is. And I know that our better, we, the best of our days are ahead of us as soon as we get by this pandemic. So I'd like to say before you even mention your comments, Andrew, thank you for a job well done. We're lucky to have you. And I, I look forward to continue to expand this program and afford more opportunities for young men and women in the city of Providence in and around the state of Rhode Island to continue to build mass uh, magnificent structures such as this performing arts center as we go forward and afford people not jobs, but career paths and opportunities via apprenticeship, via building futures. So with that, I'd just like to say thank you all. Thank, thank you for having me. And um, when is the next ground breaking? Because I'm, I've got some uh, free time in the spring, so let me know. So with that, uh, I'm going to introduce the Executive Director of Building Futures, uh, Andrew Cortez. And, and thank you all, and be safe, and God bless you. All right, thank you, Michael. And, and for those who don't know, without Michael Sabatoni's leadership of the Building Trades Council, Building Futures would not be where it is today, nor would the unionized construction trades uh, and um, the signatory contractors who rely on that skilled workforce. So thank you, Michael. Um, but we also wouldn't be where we are today without Brown University. This partnership is incredibly important and impactful. Uh, so just quickly, for those who are not familiar with Building Futures, we help people who are experiencing poverty gain a meaningful career in construction occupations, one that can sustain families. We do this through a comprehensive pre-apprenticeship program, which prepares disadvantaged individuals for placement in one of the excellent building trades occupations that are represented by Michael and the Building Trades Council. Each of these unions and, and their signatory contractors have really high quality registered apprenticeship programs to train the next generation of skilled workers. Basically, it offers an earn while you learn opportunity. And we know, for those of us who are in the community on the ground, we know our residents need opportunities for real careers. Many are not in a position to benefit from the high quality post-secondary education that Brown University offers. So if we're serious about addressing inequities in our society, then we know we need to be intentional about creating opportunities with every action. And that's exactly what Brown does with this construction. That's why it's really an honor to address you all briefly today because Brown University shows us exactly how that is done. Brown leads by example. Under the leadership of President Paxson and Mike Guglielmo, each construction project at Brown University sets intentional goals for hiring Building Futures graduates and for the amount of hours worked by apprentices. So our partnership with the trades at Brown Universities has made real impact. 
Uh, as Michael mentioned, the numbers are impressive. 320 of our graduates have been employed as registered apprentices, average starting wage of over $20 an hour. And the end wages are even better at 37 or so on average, plus the benefit package. 108 of these graduates placed into career paths through registered apprenticeship have completed a 6,000 to 10,000 hour apprenticeship program, hours that are worked right on the campus. And they're worked by diverse Providence residents, also incredibly important. In fact, 80% of our graduates are people of color. 10% of our graduates are women. And while that number may sound low, please let's remember that the national average is still around two and a half percent. Thankfully, our graduates are well prepared, they're trained well through apprenticeship, their time with the contractors, and they're retained. Over 80% we've placed over a decade are still in the industry. 90% of our women graduates are as well. So Brown University set a goal for 15% of all labor hours on this project to be performed by apprentices. And I'm very proud to say, because we track it, that goal has been achieved. On this project alone, Almost 20,000 labor hours have been performed by apprentices. And if a new apprentice is needed, a recent Building Futures graduate gains the start of their career. Through excellent signatory contractors like Shawmut, Arden Engineering, HB Welding, just to mention a few that have really put out the numbers on this project, the next generation of skilled workers are gaining their start now, right here on this project. So, the power of opportunity really cannot be underestimated. We see these opportunities transform people's lives on a regular uh, daily basis, and it's what motivates us to do this work. So it's a partnership with Brown University and the Rhode Island Building and Construction Trade Councils and their member unions that has enabled us to do this work. But let's also not forget the purpose of this building, the performing arts because our next speaker truly exemplifies the importance of performing arts with really cutting edge work that is incredibly meaningful, uh, showing a perspective that we all need to see. So it really is my honor to introduce Pulitzer Prize winning playwright, Lynn Nottage. Hello, Peter Brooks has said, drama is exposure, it is confrontation, it is contradiction, and it leads to analysis, construction, recognition, and eventually an awakening of understanding. Performing arts remains one of the few communal spaces where we, an audience, can wrestle with big, emotional, and complicated ideas and explore human truths. It is a place of the unexpected. At its best, it is dynamic, astonishing, captivating, and emotional. Performing arts can be political. It can be personal. It can be neither. But at the very least, it should have an active and robust conversation with the culture at large. Under the leadership of Avery Hoffman, this new Performing Arts Center will allow for the Brown community to invite a multitude of voices, ideas, and creative conversations to the campus. She will bring her imaginative and assured curatorial eye to this new space, having had the privilege of working with Avery at the Park Avenue Armory, where I'm an artist in residence, I can assure you that Avery thinks expansively about what and who should fill this new magnificent space. I look forward to seeing what she brings to this stage, and I look forward to visiting the Performing Arts Center. Thank you, Lynn, for your inspiring and kind words on this momentous occasion, and for all of your mighty contributions to the arts and to the Brown's artistic community. As President Paxson and Lynn mentioned, I am Avery Willis Hoffman, inaugural artistic director of the Brown's Art, Brown Arts Initiative. On behalf of Talia Field, Faculty Director, Kira Del Sesto, Director of Programs and Operations, Greg, Sean, Sophia, Katie, the Arts Council, and all the faculty, staff, and students associated with the BAI, thank you for being with us today as we raise the topping beam on our new Performing Arts Center. I add my special thank you to all the skilled men and women who've worked tirelessly across this year in very challenging circumstances to help us reach this milestone. We deeply appreciate your efforts. The Brown Arts Initiative's mission is to be an artistic hub for the campus, to cultivate creative expression and foster an interdisciplinary environment where faculty and students can learn from one another and from artists and scholars in a wide range of fields from across the campus, Providence, New England, and the world. 
Thanks to the incredible leadership and support of President Paxson and Provost Locke and all our generous donors, the BAI and our new state-of-the-art Performing Arts Center will build on Brown's reputation as a destination for arts exploration, contributing to cultural enterprise through the integration of theory and practice with an emphasis on innovation and discovery that results from rigorous art making, collaboration, and experimentation. Just a few notes on the Performing Arts Center. The main performance hall will transform into five vastly different stage and audience configurations, ranging from a symphony orchestra hall to a proscenium theater, to an open exhibition space or an immersive surround sound cube for experimental media performance. Below street level, there will be spaces for theater, music, and dance, which will allow students and faculty and artists and residents to create cutting edge original artwork and offer spaces for student groups and other collaborative endeavors. As President Paxson mentioned, at a time when the arts industry has been dealt a particularly crushing blow, this building and all that it represents brings us great hope and great opportunity. Opportunity to support our students, our faculty, our communities of artists, apprentices, technicians, as well as the broader artistic ecosystem, which provides us essential uplift, solidarity and catharsis, fresh perspectives, tools for survival or radical transformation. I'm looking forward to collaborating with you all, hopefully soon in person, to amplify the power of the arts to inspire societal change and make space for challenging conversations and discoveries. So stay tuned for more information about our artistic planning as we get closer to the opening day of this magnificent building. And now it is my honor to say, please join me in raising the beam.
Yes. Yes. I uh, can't help stand up. Thank you.